Hello, and in this part, we're going to create a curve as input and spawn our fences on that curve to actually make a fence or draw a fence on an area. So we already have our tool. So previously, I cleaned up the interface, so we have a better interface to work with. Now I want to have an input with curve. So let's create a curve here on this level. So we can use different types of curves. So we can use the draw curve. So we can just draw it. And I would like the curve to be uh, on the normal grid, as you could see here. So if I now would draw it, it will actually be only in that area. So I'm going to go here to projection mode and set the projection mode to then the Z and explain. So now I have this and I can draw a curve in any shape I want. So I could draw something that is also big enough. So said this is the scale of my uh, fence. So if we draw something like this, we can probably copy paste this a couple times then. You could also use other methods like the curve node. Here we can also, for example, take our grid and we can enable snapping to our grid here. Uh, and we can draw points or click and press enter when you're done and we can have that. So you can use one of these to work with and we want to use this now as input. So let's go to our settings. So select asset and open the properties and we're going to go here into our basic values and we now want to use our inputs here. So I would like to see a minimum input of one. So press apply and it's not working because my maximum also needs to be set to one. So pressing apply now will uh, have a input now. So you could see that there is this uh, input now. So before I jump in, I also want to talk about, we also now have this warning here. So that's the reason why there is difference between minimum and maximum. So minimum means it's required to have at least one. So if I put this to zero and press apply, my tool will work fine and the error is gone. Because again, I'm saying that the required amount of inputs is zero. And if I say here one requirement of inputs is one input at least. So you could go crazy and for example, add more inputs as you could see. But most of the time you want to be careful with that so it doesn't get too messy uh, for people to use the tool as well so now that is set i would like to have at least one input and press apply we're gonna then for example plug in our curve and we're gonna go in the network so in our network here you should be able to see a node called sub network input number one so this should be able to find somewhere in your scene. So since my scene is not too big, it's easy to find. And we're gonna use this all the way down here. So let's create a system where I want to use this curve and I want to copy my models on that curve. So for visualization now, I'm gonna place a null node. And I call this input, for example. And I can see my curve uh, clearly here. So if I enable points, we can see that we have a lot of different points and they might be in a different spacing. So they're not evenly spaced out uh, and that might not also be perfectly aligned. So what we're going to use is we're going to resample our curve. So that's something we often do with curves is resample them. So we resample and now they are evenly spaced out as you could see. Now I don't need that much points, so we can increase, for example, the length. So if I start increasing this, we will now increase the length between each point. So this can be interesting. So let's start with setting this to five. And we can also use the measure method to a long court here. So this means that it will try to respect the length of five as most as possible. If we set this to a long curve, some lines are not perfectly five in length. 
So if my fence is, for example, length five, I would also have to then fill in five here. So it sort of like matches up when I copy and done. And then a cool note to quickly paste the fence on the curve is copy to curve. So copy to curves. My first input says it's geometry. So here is my fence. And my second input says it's the curve to copy on. So now we have our fence on that curve. So I can see it's not perfectly copied on there. So we want to probably change a couple properties in here. One of the first things I want to change is here the tangent type. I want to change this to the next edge. This will basically help to have uh, the points or the models looking at each other. So they will look at the next edge or the next point to help with their orientation. So now we have that result. Also here important is the pivot of the model. So if we look at here my scene, my pivot is perfectly here in this middle. This will then make it easier for my tool to rotate along the line here. Next step, what I can see if I zoom in closer is that we'll have a lot of overlapping uh, fences here. So we're gonna go to the resample and we're gonna increase this value to, for example, 5.5 maybe. And now we can see that they are now even, they are more spaced out. So I can increase this value slowly to see what works. And I think something like this works pretty well. So as you can see, they now are nicely uh, along each other. So this is basically a system to copy them on that line. So if I would now go here and drag this down and change the input or the output here and save this, so save tool, I can now here start drawing my fences. So I can grab my handle here and I can start drawing a variety of fences here. So you can see that there is some like snapping to them because it's like trying to respect uh, the fence by itself. So we're not deforming the geometry, we're just purely copying them on that line. So what I can also see here is that we have them basically faced in the wrong direction, can happen. So we're gonna have to go to the option here with the copy to curves, and we're gonna here set the up factor to the Y axis. The Y axis is always looking upwards. And that sort of like fixes that issue. So that's a bit about how we can use inputs and also a bit about using curves in our tool. So final thing to work on here is actually going to our properties here again, and we can go to in and outputs, and we can now give actually proper namings to our tool. So the input is, for example, for curves, and the output will be then, for example, geometry. So when I press apply, if I hover now on this dot here, we can see curves, and here we can see geometry. So we can give this specific naming so people will know what to input. So like I just saw with that copy to curve, if for example, people don't know what the input should be, they can always look up here and hover over that input and they will see what the name is and they know what to input then. So it's very useful to give these proper namings so people know uh, how to use them. Again, we can also change the input here to curves as well, to the other curve as well. That will work fine. So we can grab one of the points and we can make this longer, change this to whatever you would like to see. So this works fine. So one thing I noticed here is that the color is not applied with this one. So the reason for that is if we look at the curve here and if we go here to our sprite sheet, so in our primitives here, it already has a color. So if I would like to have the color of my fence, we can just use a delete attributes and we can delete the color value. So here, primitive, delete color, 
and that should work fine. So by default, the color of the line will be copied on the models, which can be very useful in some cases. But in this case, I did not want that. So now we have that result. So yeah, so we can keep on drawing fences and add more different inputs. Like you can add an input for custom planks or custom models, things like that. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.